Hello everybody, welcome back. I feel as an investor is a sin to make this kind of video, but I figured I would keep you guys updated. If you guys are subscribed and watch my live show, The Cash Flow Kings, you would have already known about this, but I have recently sold out of my entire Nike position at a pretty hefty loss by percentage amount. Now, by dollar amount, Nike was one of the smaller positions in my portfolio, and today I'm going to be explaining why I sold out of Nike, what I put the money into, and my thoughts on Nike going forward, because I really don't think it's a horrible business, but it's just not right for me at the moment. Let's get into the video, though. Hello, I like money. So get the paper hand jokes out of the way, I want to first off address why I bought Nike in the first place, and if anything has changed for my thesis. So I originally started my Nike position in January of 2021 when I really didn't know a whole lot about investing and valuation. And Nike unfortunately is one of the biggest traps for common investors because of how strong its brand is and also how strong their business is. In fact, Nike I think is the only clothing brand that I'm confident their brand will be around in 20, 30 years and isn't a fad. They've done a great job adjusting through decades and I believe kids are going to be wearing Nikes for a very long time. But with that said though, it's just not the right stock for me at the time. So I bought at $140 and I did overpay for the company looking at their cash flows. I sold at $95 at a 16% loss. I got the average down over time, which I was happy I was able to do. And I sold at a $45 loss. Now, when you sell a stock prematurely, I think opportunity cost is the only reason to justify it if the business hasn't really qualitatively declined. And I mean, you could make the argument that Nike's direct-to-consumer fail has failed a lot and that was a big part of my thesis. But I think Nike's brand is still as strong as it's been. And while Nike may or may not have had a few blunders in their time, I think their brand is just very resilient to tough economic times. When I was in elementary school, Nikes were the coolest thing to wear. When I was in middle school, same thing. When I was in high school, same exact thing. And I see that cycle continuing today and continuing in the future. I've said this so many times, but I think if you have a business that can have a $30 shoe, put their logo on it, and sell it for $300, and have it sell out instantly, it's a really good business. I simply overpaid for the company in a time where my investing wasn't really as polished as it is today. And don't get me wrong, I didn't get some crazy amount of capital or money to spend on new stocks from this. It was a very small position. And consolidating my portfolio, I'm being a lot more loose when it comes to selling out of companies where I don't have a crazy dollar amount in them. Yes, it sucks, especially with a great business like Nike and a very strong brand you hate to sell out of an amazing business that you bought for the long term especially at a loss but I think opportunity cost is a very real thing. Looking at Nike's free cash flow, their growth has been actually pretty solid over the long term, but their growth has been slowing down, and it appears their growth could be slowing down in terms of revenue as well in the future. They have a 5-year growth at a 5.36% and a 10-year growth at of 8.95%. That wasn't really much of an issue when it came to Nike. I think the growth is alright. You could see that slowing down, especially with the failed direct-to-consumer launch. And Nike also buys back a decent amount of shares reoccurringly as well, which is a very positive thing to see in a business. But one, I think something you definitely do need to look at is the opportunity cost. For me, I'm 18 years old. Does it make sense to own Nike for 25, 30, 40 years? So I can just put that in SHG or maybe something else that I think is a lot more predictable and hands off. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense. It also doesn't make a whole lot of sense that I'm probably just holding the stock right now if I didn't already sell out of it. At this point with Nike, it was just $200, $250 just sitting in my account. I would rarely buy any more unless it would go below 90 And even if it had a really solid return, recovery and stock price I would barely even make any money on it it just didn't make sense so why not add that money that was in Nike and that's just kind of sitting there hoping for an eventual recovery why not put it into one of my higher conviction stocks that I'm very more confident in in the long term and let that compound over time whereas Nike it wouldn't have that really big compound effect so a couple of the big reasons that I really sold out of Nike it just didn't make sense for me to own on to it anymore at this point in my opinion a recovery is likely to happen but how much is that really going to benefit me if it does happen and I looked myself realistically and honestly in the mirror and I said, yes, I can be patient with this company, maybe hold it for a few more years, collect that 1% dividend yield or whatever for every year and hope for a couple dollars of recovery or I could just feed it into one of my higher conviction stocks and let that compounding process begin and accelerate it. You may ask where I put that money and I kind of hinted at it at first, but I put $100 of the 200 into SHG. It's a highly popular growth ETF and it's really going to accelerate my total returns, which could be lacking in my portfolio. I plan to just hold on to it for a very long time and let it compound over time. It also gives me access and more diversity to some companies that I don't own in the portfolio, Cough Cough NVIDIA, also maybe some Tesla. It gives you some really solid total return without having to really pick and choose stocks, which I'm all in for. 
I'm really, every day as I learn and grow as an investor, I just get closer to buying index funds, honestly, guys. I kept some of the money I got from Nike in a cash, but I put the rest of it into Visa, of course. Visa, in my opinion, one of the highest quality businesses in the entire world. I have a core position in my portfolio, and I'm continuing to build it up. I think it's at fair price right now, and a lot of analysts are having this be the lowest price I can hit. Obviously, analyst estimations are bullshit at the end of the day, but if they think it's undervalued, that must mean something. It's a really great business, payment processor, and really just a business that I'm way more confident long-term will compound in my returns compared to Nike. That's really the evaluation that I took. I asked myself, obviously, do I think that Nike's going to make recovery? Yes, but how much am I going to profit off of that? And then with the opportunity cost, I looked myself hard in the mirror. What are two positions that I'd love to build up that I think can compound and accelerate my total return? Visa and SHG were some of the obvious ones, and I want to build those up continuously. All right, I hope you guys appreciate the transparency. If you also own Nike, let me know why in the comments section. I'm hoping you guys get a recovery. Still an amazing brand at the end of the day. If I were an investor, I'm still very bullish in Nike that they're going to make a recovery. But for me, in personal finance, it just made sense for me to sell opportunity cost. Thank you guys for watching. Smash like and subscribe. And do dividend stocks on drugs. Have a good one.